So after the concert, Ayutu and I were walk, walking down the street, and I said, I was about 20 years old, I said, Ayutu, I'm going to leave the country because I'm just beginning my career. What is a singer that cannot sing lyrics, cannot mm -hmm. sing words? Yeah. yeah. You know, how much of a future do I have? Mm -hmm. And he's, he begged me not to leave because we were in love with each other. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning, he said to me, don't even think about marriage, you know, because I'm already married. I'm married to, married to music. Yeah. I said, good, because I am also married to music. Mm -hmm. So when I, <laughs> I was about to leave, he was, are you really leaving? I said, well, aren't you married? <laughs> so am I. <laughs> yeah. So I, I remember when, when the, the airplane took off, I saw my whole family there, even my father, mm -hmm. who didn't speak with me oh. for a while because Mm -hmm. He didn't approve of me singing in the night. And my little daughter was there for my first marriage. And I was sitting and watching them waving goodbye to me. And I'm, I was thinking, I don't think I'll ever see them again. No. I didn't think uh, the dictatorship the was going to end. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't willing to go back to a place where I couldn't speak yeah. freely. Mm. So that was the beginning. It was uh, in, in 1967. Mm. It was December 19, 18th of December Gosh. 1967, a week before Christmas. Yeah. And I went to New York and I knew where Elmidio Dato was mm -hmm. staying. And I arrived in early in the morning and I called his room. He was like half asleep. And he said, why don't you just take a room at the hotel and we speak around two or three o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I took a room, but he was, it was like an apart hotel. Yeah. So he was paying monthly a fee. And I took a room, a regular room, which was $200 a, a day. Whoa. So I had a limited amount of money and I saw $200 a day. I knew I couldn't stay there. So the next day I talked to him and he said that it was very, very hard to work in America. You need a work per permit uh, or green card and, and it wasn't very easy to, to get one. Mm, yeah. So I, I was kind of Sad, I said, and I said to myself, okay, I'm gonna go back, but before I go back, I have to go to the Harlem. I've gotta see my idols. Mm. So I've, I got an address for the Club Baron, which was, was where everybody hung, hung out yeah. after their gigs. Mm. And um, it was in the, in the heart of the Harlem. And I got there, and the doorman was giving me a hard time saying that I was at the wrong place at the wrong time and doing the wrong thing <laughs> and that he wasn't going to sell me a ticket and I said I came from Brazil just to, to hear this and he called me Snow White and all that stuff and mm. in the back was like a, a man passing and he had a Muslim hat and he saw that happening he walked to the door and he scolded the doorman. Then he extended this big hand, he had a big, big hand, and said, please don't be afraid. You, you are my guest. Come and sit with my lady. And he took me inside the club and I sat with this, a, not, a, a white lady mm -hmm. and she was a countess. Uh, it was Nika, the Countess Nika, who had helped okay. go train and Charlie Parker. Oh. And, and in fact, they wrote a song called Nika's Dream. Yeah, of course, uh, Hobbit Silver. Right, That's right. Beautiful and, then, version, yeah. and she used to take care of those guys when they were sick. Mm. And 
she was like a patron that really, she was the protector, the angel, the guardian angel of all the musicians. Mm. So I'm sitting with her and the opening act was um, Mongo Santa Maria and his piano player was Chip Corea, mm -hmm. which I didn't know yet, he was very young. Yeah. And I'm looking around and I, I saw Wayne Shorta sitting in the bar and then I saw Carmen McRae a little further mm -hmm. and I saw Sarah in a group with, of people. Yeah. Art Blakey was mm -hmm. on stage and I was like, oh my God. I am in heaven. Yeah. I'm in heaven. And then the the, the first uh, group finished, so the second group went on, mm -hmm. and they announced. And now we do the line is one. Mm -hmm. And then the man that had helped me to get into the club was the line is one. I didn't. I have never seen his picture. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Then I really thought I was dreaming. I was really dreaming. Yeah. After the gig, he said, come on, let's hang out at Walter Booker's house. <laughs> That's where everybody's going. And over there we, we jam, mm -hmm. we all play music. And, and that's what, how, how it happened. That's, yeah. Then I met Chick Corea, mm -hmm. Dave Holland, yeah. um, everybody, all the musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonny Rollins was, um, who else was there? Charlie Rouse was yeah. there constantly, and uh, uh, Robin Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. I, Jesus, everybody was there, everybody. And I, I began to, to go to that house every night after two or three o'clock in the morning, that's when it started. Mm -hmm. Everybody would converge to the place and would jam it with each other's band until the next day noon time. Mm -hmm. Then they go to sleep, wake up about a couple of hours before the gig, do the gig, and every mm -hmm. day was the same thing. Just living for the music. Yeah, and Joe's Avenue was a very uh, somebody that was there at all times, and, and it was Joe's Avenue that told Miles Davis about Ayrton. Okay. That so, and and I used to went to record with Miles. I mean, Miles Miles's manager, Jack Whitmore, called the house on Thanksgiving Day when nobody was home because Walter Booker went to Washington to spend Thanksgiving with his family. Mm -hmm. And Lee Morgan, a trumpet player, yeah. came over for some reason. And uh, the phone rang, and it was Jack Whitmore, Miles' manager. And Jack said, I'm calling you because Miles would like you to come to a session tomorrow. And I just said, this got to be it, somebody told me. <laughs> Hung up the phone. So it's typical of my ear, so is it? <laughs> well, the, 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 the doorbell rang. And he opens, it was Lee, and Lee said, where is Walter, where is Walter? We used to call him Bookie. Yeah. Booker, uh, call mm. him Bookie. Hey, Bookie. Yeah. Where is oh, Wal Walter? went to Washington, and Lee said to Aitu, what are you doing here by yourself on Thanksgiving? And Lee was very black power, you know? Yeah. It was yeah. like, he wouldn't even talk to white people. Wow. But they didn't consider us white. They, yeah, because the Brazilians. You know, we are Brazilians, yeah. so yeah. It's, we are in a different category. Mm. We were lowest, the, the, even lower than black people. You know? oh, <laughs> we were the housekeepers. We were the, like uh, we had to go through the same uh, uh, situation of uh, races yeah. over there. Mm. So I had to went to, became real close to Lee Morgan and went to spend Thanksgiving there and I took off to Mexico City to to play a gig with the Tamba Trio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Erta Kit was the big opening act there. Mm -hmm. That was, 
Yeah. <laughs> wow, such an amazing introduction to America, that's for sure. And you hooked up with Duke Pearson because you you contributed on two of his albums, uh, How Insensitive and It Can Only Happen With You, which gave us the uh, How Insensitive, the Sandalia, which is just such a gorgeous track. You know, just a real beauty. But then also, on it could uh, only happen with you, Stormy. Mm. Wow, and that's just a long movie, isn't it? I mean, Duke, Duke Person was the very first guy that trusted us and invited us mm. to record on his record and paid us under the table because we didn't have a green card. Mm. And that was originally the very, very, very first recording uh, that both of us, Ayrton and I, and some of the Tamba guys yeah. did. Mm -hmm. And I did this record and the second one with him. Yeah. And, it, and then it took another year or so when the chick left Miles to mm -hmm. form a group with Anthony Braxton and Dave Holland to play just free form and Barry Auschwitz. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Auschwitz. My, my, my language is very confused because I hear lots of different languages mm -hmm. and I speak few of them. But when I have to think, I sometimes in one phrase I say five different languages mm. if I cannot catch the words <laughs> fast enough. 